Are you gonna get free this time? Falling into a blue sky mind Came to me in that song, my friend Welcome back to You, Me, and the Elephant with Crystal Clear. Mmm, I like it. And Deborah Air. <laughs> nice. That was pretty good pronunciation. The, the tongue roll. I don't... I don't have two R's, but I like it. Mm. I might have to add another R. Deborah. Go. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of that, this is such a beautiful parlay into what are you saying is what we're talking about today. <laughs> Minus my, what my, what my phone is saying, it's vibrating in a uh, non apropos timing. Mm. We're so fascinating as we humans. are like <laughs> fascination. That's not even a song, but I just want to make everything where, what is a song that has fascination in it? I don't know why I'm thinking of Willy Wonka right now for some reason. Oh, <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> something about something about a candy Oompa, factory. And, Oompa, yeah, exactly. Everything that they said was in song. <laughs> I don't remember the words to say. <laughs> so I'm imagining magic gum, the gum creation that he had, and then having yes, gum and yeah. then changing your vibration, and all of a sudden you're speaking yeah, these there words you of truth. Like, this is saying. this is so perfect because everyone listening is probably like what are they saying <laughs> no. is there gonna are we gonna get to somewhere are we getting to a point uh, the truth is we don't know if we're gonna get to a point because you and me and the elephant is about the space so we just hang in the space and we just float and flitter and have some fun along the way so this came up what are you saying in part from just even doing this podcast. And although I've done many videos and heard myself speak in on different venues before, this has been probably the most consistent. And it's interesting to go back and listen to a podcast mm -hmm. and how many you knows, how many maybes, how many sort of, how many likes do we edit, do I listen to? And, and very interesting to to observe what I am saying in a given moment and how what languaging I'm using like impacts the meaning and how kind of what I was just saying, kind of, right? I'm just saying, I'm really noticing it. I'm going to be really, really observant as we're speaking. When yeah. I replay and re-listen, that word like is almost in- It's a lot. It's in, I feel like I'm pausing, like- Yeah constantly and i don't notice it when i'm saying it but when you go back and you re-listen it's there and it slaps me in the face and i am curious about what is that yeah. why do i well do i think that i think that also like like that it's not necessarily these words aren't necessarily bad it's not like oh i gotta right. i gotta cut them out in fact as you have noticed I'm like, just don't cut out as much now where before I was like, oh my God. And I feel like I was trying to present somebody I wasn't. I could feel when I would listen to when we first started this, how many different what I would call fillers that I would put in once mm -hmm. we started pressing record. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was less of them before we were jamming before we pressed record. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But I realized part of what I was doing is feeling my own apprehension or very subtle insecurities and I would want to cut them out now re retrospectively is how I'm saying that that I wouldn't want you to hear that why I don't know I want you to hear me as somebody of wisdom and that doesn't use these maybe sort of kind of like like I didn't want you to think I was human I don't know <laughs> I mean, I'm being a little bit hard on myself here but the point is is that it's not so much the words but what is the context that we're speaking about when we're speaking to somebody or we're in an environment? And what is the state of being we are in while saying them? And I think that that's what this conversation for me anyways is about is what is the energy <clears throat> of who I'm being reflect what I say and 
how can that give me clues? So it's less about like, we need the word maybe, we need the word like, we need the (laughs) word sort of and kind of because they reflect an energy, but is the who I'm being and what I want to say congruent to those words? I think that's what comes up with the editing process. It's not that someone showed us the list and said, in order to have a good podcast, you need to limit these filler words. But when we hurt ourselves, and then that just almost like was on repeat, and we could feel that energy when we said that word, feel this, the buffer before what I'm about to say, feel like I need to explain a lot more before I give the punchline. We were noticing, yeah. what is that? Like, yeah. do we do that all the time? Because we right. were sensing and feeling that feedback. We were yeah. witnessing ourselves. Right. Which that's it. it. That's the offering today is to certainly not listen to what you're, you're saying to add more self-judgment at all. It's more, and it's actually to be able to discover the self-judgment because the first time, I don't know if you've ever heard yourself record it. I know you have, I'm saying Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. listeners, the first time we hear ourselves recorded, I've heard so many people say, oh my God, I hate the way I sound. Even when people do their voicemails, like how many people have like a real voicemail to leave me a message? Or is it just like this automated thing now? People could play Mm -hmm. that simple little things like, oh gosh, what if like a job's calling me? What if the president is calling me? What if like someone really important is calling me and they're going to judge me off my voicemail? (laughs) For some reason, this just sparked my memory. In, I don't know that I've done this recently, but in this is a confessional in, in this moment <laughs> that like sometimes when somebody has called me in the morning and I feel like I should have already, like even if I was awake, but I haven't uh-huh. talked to anybody and you have that morning yep. voice, yep. before I would answer, I'd be like, hello, 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 <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> I would literally be like, ah. And I'd be yeah. like, hey, what's up? Hi. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, what Just is gonna... that? <laughs> That's so true. And I'm like, why can't I be like, dude, why are you calling me right now? I'm still <laughs> sleeping. Because I might have the, <laughs> really. Like, I've done that. Why... That's why I'm laughing so much. I'm like, oh my gosh, you just called out me too. <laughs> yeah, this is why it's so revealing. It's like how we're trying to present ourselves and It's certainly okay if you're going into an interview or I think it's important to know your audience, to know where are you stepping into. But the interesting dance, I think, is can we keep ourselves in part of that identity that we're speaking? Can we walk into a room and still be us? Do we act? And I really noticed this when I first started practicing and I used to wear wait for it, nylons and pumps. <laughs> Those of you that have ever worked with me in my office, I, I don't wear shoes and I certainly don't wear a fitted, and there's nothing wrong with this, like corporate style suit anymore. The point is the identity I had as Dr. Deb and the identity I was with my friends and hanging out, there was a much bigger gap That so much so years ago, if I was walking down the street and I was about to pass a, a, you know, I may have called them patients back then, but a client, they wouldn't even recognize me because there was such a gap between this like identity of who I was in the office and the identity I was in like my quote unquote real life. So I think that language gives us like what we're saying gives us these clues of to check in of like, who am I being right now? And can I be me? Mm -hmm. And I think there is also merit to consider again, what you're walking into. You can just say, well, I want to be me. So I'm going to go in an interview. I'm going to be chewing gum. I'm going to be like, what's up, motherfuckers? You know, like, no, you want to know your audience, but can you still be you within that audience? And that is a a thing to observe, whether Mm -hmm. it's friend groups or your relationships of any kind, whether it's work relationships, home relationships, social relationships, how much of you are you getting to be? And you can, through language, observe some of those things. Mm -hmm. It pops up for me right now, how much I observe others in their language. And I'm 
<laughs> especially in my family. What do you think that is? Yeah. So with, with my teens, especially, we had a whole conversation the other day of saying yeah versus mm. yes with mm. my son. And my son, I mean, ba- in, in his defense, he was all like, yes is longer than yeah. And I just think it's exhausting to say yes completely all the time <laughs> when I really just mean, yeah, I was like, what is happening right now? And so it was funny because he was trying to say, let me just be me. I'm 13. I say, yeah, that's what me and my friends do. We talk to each other like that. And then it opened the door of like, okay, that's great. And when you're talking to your teacher or you're talking to your parents, we are asking for a yes. Even if a few yes come in there, but don't let yeah be the first thing. And there was more of a a why behind it. We were trying to teach, know your audience. What are you here for? What are we talking about? Are you having something to be accountable for right now? I think think a yes (laughs) would be more clear than a yeah. So, I mean, it just opened the door for this whole conversation on how we say and what we say. And it was, I applaud him for still honoring, this is me, this is how I talk in a moment where he was probably interpreting that I think you should never be able to say yeah. And Mm -hmm. yeah, always means rude. When really I was trying to get a bigger point of know your audience and who you're talking to and responding in that way. (laughs) Right. So I'm guessing the yes is teaching him that there, there are ways of speaking that like that what we say has a resonance, right? It has a ripple out into the world. Yeah. I know we swear on this podcast, but when <laughs> warning, <laughs> <laughs> too late, <laughs> <Your mouth. laughs> Your mouth. but when Bailey was, he might kill me for this when he was probably four or five, he's like, mom, I, can I say a swear word? Like he asked me, which was the cutest thing ever. Mm-hmm. Of course what, I loved about, what, I lo- what I loved about what I loved about it is he was like somehow he was hearing it certainly not from me but he was hearing this and he's like can I say this because he knows that there's like this no part of that right so can I say this and he did and he was like you know all of a sudden it was very methodical it was like shit <laughs> it was very like Tourette's shit and he's like fuck <laughs> fuck <laughs> and I was like okay. And then I sat down with him and I said, here's the thing, words in themselves without the energy are just words, but words have impact in the culture Mm. that you live in and ripple certain ways. And we've talked on here before about the energy we put in words absolutely makes a huge difference. It's like, oh, can I help you? Oh, can Mm -hmm. like, can I help you? You know, there's, there's, such a difference in the energy, but there's also the reality that there's cultural ways in which words show up and the meanings they give that Mm -hmm. can influence how connected you become with the world. And so I sat, I didn't quite say that with him, but I was like, when you say this word, it has an impact. And so that's what I'm hearing when you talk about Dylan and and the yeah and the yes and this feeling of respect. And I've really learned this with learning a new language Honestly, just how kind of lazy we are as maybe as Americans in general and how we speak. I mean, just look at a text. I have to look up those people that text me and it's just all acronyms. And I'm like, what? I don't know what this means. So I'm looking up on Google instead of just saying like, what are you trying to say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> can you can you type it out? Can you actually yep. say it? Maybe call me. So with learning Spanish, especially in Costa Rica, their different cultures are certainly different in, in that way. But Costa Rica tends to be a bit, little bit more formal. And I realized, because I'm trying to translate into Spanish, <clears throat> not only is it different structure and maybe how they say it, but I'm also not even having a clear thought of what the proper way to say it in English is, if that makes sense. I'm like, mm-hmm. wow, I'm just saying like half sentences or half meanings. Mm-hmm. So I think this all comes to really being able to look at, you know, we were talking about this earlier about categories of when we're using filler language, you know, like maybe sort of, we try to soften and, you know, that could be because you know your audience and it could be a delicate situation. We could, I think always asking a question is great actually to enter into maybe 
more tender connection mm -hmm. and communication. Also, I think that coming in with sometimes softening intro doesn't mean that you can't be direct. But I also feel like when I was listening to myself on this podcast and I was saying kind of, sort of, A, it was a habit. It was just a habit that came out of my mouth without consciousness in ways that if I peel it back a little bit more, that it is my way of maybe being a woman and not being too direct. Maybe I think I'll be bitchy. Maybe I think I'll feel like I'm a know-it-all. Maybe I wanna not, I wanna not scare people away. Because I've also had that, I mean, I'm just literally realizing this right mm -hmm. now, speaking to you, that I get this a little less now, but I certainly do, that people have told me that I'm intense, that I'm very, quote unquote, passionate. Sometimes it has certainly hit me in a sensitive way where I feel like, oh my gosh, am I too much? Did I do that wrong? And those are some of my stories. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting to look at this part of where do we pull ourselves back because we're softening for a place of like avoidance of something, avoidance of being able to be in your own power and visibility of what you really want to say with the fear of either potentially being rejected or whatever that might be. If we're softening because of that, that's something we can look at. It's like, well, what is your next version where you can maybe be a little bit more bold with what you say, maybe take out a softening language. And the other part of the avoidance languaging fillers is they also become a habit. I think we speak a lot like that in our mm -hmm. culture in general, yeah. or we say things habitually like, oh, I love you, or, oh, we should, we should get together. And that can happen in such a habitual way that no one really means what they're saying. Yeah. It's this filler space that's, that is this nicety that has lost its girth of meaning. Oh, love you. You know, I love you. And it's like, show me or sh uh, let me show you, let, let me be love versus we can use languaging. That's like an avoidance of something deeper in the avoidance category. Mm -hmm. And I find it very interesting in observing these things in myself. And that's what originally brought this theme up to begin with. How do people that may not utilize the apps that some of us use where we can record a video text to one another and then hit playback, how do you recommend someone tune in their ears to listening for these things without it being the critiquing mind Mm -hmm. but observing because I feel like I don't know if I would have caught it unless someone a mm -hmm. called it out in me mm -hmm. or I was getting ready to present something and someone was editing me or we become get on a platform like this like how can we do that for well, ourselves I think that there's several ways one would be what you were already saying that you do is that you observe others speaking mm-hmm it can be easy to judge others. Mm -hmm. right? We're looking outside of ourselves so much in the culture anyways. We're conditioned to do that. Yep. So, Well, can... I want to add to judging and admiring. There's people sure. that I've yeah. listened to that I, I gravitate towards something that they're saying or doing. Oh, or thank you. Vibration. Thank you very much. Like that? <laughs> Anna, shout out. <laughs> JK, JK. Oh, wait. I'm just kidding. Ah, um, cute enough. But, right. <laughs> so, so right. It's like, so yes, well said. It's, it's judging. We're still judging, right? So we're judging, admiring, mm -hmm. because what you're feeling in that other person might be more congruent mm -hmm. between like feeling the energy of who they are and the potency of being able to speak that right so i think that observing others is great and we can pick up those things and go oh i wonder how does that reside in me what are the things that i say again i think we need to be mindful of not to beat ourselves up over it as much as right. maybe the other part of this is let's say you are walking into an interview or you're wanting to have a, a conversation that may potentially be uncomfortable, or you just want to say something that you've been wanting to say, but you keep 
avoiding it. Mm -hmm. Being with yourself and saying, well, what do I really want to say? What feels important to me right now? And I think that what I have learned when I enter those conversations that may be a little bit more scary or that we I could easily avoid is first of all, like creating a time that feels like is available for that me and that other person to be able to have a conversation, not just on the flight. Oh yeah, by the way, you know, I was really wanting to tell you this. Okay, bye, gotta go. Bye. Love you. Get Let's car. get together. Yeah. Do Love it again. You mean it. That's right. Exactly. Because we can all do that. <laughs> okay, yeah, but uh, and they're like, I don't remember you saying that. I'm like, oh yeah, I totally said that as I was dri driving off. <laughs> right. <laughs> but really, let's have coffee. Let's, you know, sit at a cafe for a moment. And entering into, because I think we all, to some degree, have the worry of when there's something discomforting, whether we're the ones that are initiating the conversation or not, that we A, don't want to hurt somebody's feelings, that we want to be able to have actual communication because we can talk at each other a lot. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I mean. It doesn't really have girth, mm -hmm. but can you enter a conversation that says, I'm a little nervous to have this conversation and this is on me, but it feels really important to me. And I'm so grateful that, you know, we're, you're able to be here. So thank you. I want to start off by saying thank you in a way that honors the person because it might, if it's an uncomfortable conversation, there might be triggers that come up for that other person. Because ultimately as humans, if we keep like peeling back the layers, all of us want to be loved. All of us mm -hmm. want to feel like we've done well, and we don't want to be abandoned in some way. So triggers can come up, but I think that when we can become more conscious of what we really want and what words match what we really want, and then going back to the reading the room, like if it's a difficult conversation that you're initiating, can you enter in, in the state of grace and the state of honoring both yourself and that other person, even if they've hurt you, even if you feel hurt mm -hmm. to go in and say, you've hurt me, mm -hmm. is not the best way. Like boom, doors closed. Or if that person is like, they might say, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But again, does it have meaning? Does it, right. is there communication? Is there healing? Is there actual exchange that's happened that has shifted the experience in that dynamic. And so that's one thing I would say is really being able to feel like asking yourself, what is it that I'm feeling? What is it that I really want to say? And then it's just the commonality. Like I started noticing this several years ago of meeting people and they're like, oh, I love you. Let's get together. And I could feel like it was really, it had no roots, you know? And I literally forced myself to be like, it, it started to feel not good to just return that and say, oh yeah. I might say, great, when do you wanna do that? I have Tuesday available. Or I'd say, hey, you know, like, that's great. It's great to see you. I would just say something that just felt more true for me in mm -hmm. the moment and it felt good. And I feel like as I do that more and more, there's more congruence in my relationships. And I still get nervous about having harder conversations and can still side eye it sometimes. But I also have, the more I've gained languaging and being able to communicate differently, the more I have this rooted place that feels honoring to myself and to others, which makes it easier. Yeah, you know? it really does feel like a life skill that- It is. It Me, absolutely is. More attention, more value, something that is not just for school age kids, this God, technical, no. gram gr grammatical way of communicating in the world, <clears throat> but this honoring of the words that are coming out of your mouth start with the feelings you're having on the inside, the thoughts that you're thinking, the yeah. vibration that's happening, and then it's externalized. And mm -hmm. so really witnessing and recognizing and that awareness piece, when you can see that with a new lens or a new pair of glasses, or when we're looking at that from more than one angle, it really broadens the opportunity to not have to resort something that we can't get out of by using our words. So when we're unable Absolutely. to communicate and we're unable to know what we're saying and how we're saying it, 
then we're going to go to something that's not communication, which does tend to be now we're fighting, we're, we're like physically avoiding someone. Maybe there's these other mm-hmm. tools that we need to bring out because that communication has been broken down. Even the text messages that we send each other, we're like, what did they mean by that? And then maybe not even asking, like you're saying with the the acronyms that are coming through. It's like sometimes we don't even ask and we just let that be this vibration that didn't settle right. Communication in our culture absolutely deserves a reboot and some attention. One thing that I just want to highlight that I'm personally so passionate about, and also because I've had so many conversations with dear friends about, well, but I love this person. And first of all, it's great to even consider what does that mean for somebody? Am I addicted to that person? Am I used to that person? What is it that you're loving? Mm -hmm. But beyond the love, I'm going to just say it this way, beyond love, we need skills. That's one of the things you hit. We need communication skills. And I think they become one of the same is why I was pausing in that. But to keep it simple, it's like you can say you love a person, And usually people say that when there's a challenge and they're in pain, but I Mm -hmm. love them. But without communication skills and relating skills, forget it. Like you absolutely, that is where the humanity comes in because I think we can, again, go into the, I love you. I love you. The habitual addicted part of, I love you. And the communication skills, I think, truly brings the bridge. It is the bridge to loving. Mm -hmm. It's the bridge to relating. And without it, we have pretty much, you know, skated over that. And it's like, well, if there's love there, I've got that spark no matter what, but we could be in so much pain and never really getting any further. And we all know what that can be like, because we end up down the line and so much pain and sometimes can't even believe that we love that person. And the other part that you went over is that we can fight. We're going to resist. And I think fighting languaging comes in so many ways. I think when we are practicing being more clear and being a bit more courageous, we can, I've certainly heard this in myself. I've noticed it also on this podcast where I'm like, God, my face looks so serious because Mm -hmm. I think, and sometimes I'm just really passionate, but I think that when we're, we're stepping into this new aspect of courage, we can come out fighting. We can be like, I got to push through Mm -hmm. because we're free. We're, we're, we're on that, we're on that edge of growth. And with that, be kind to yourself because I think that when we're beginning to have more courage, we may come out with a little more mind focus because we're not wanting to forget what we want to say, or, you know, we're really trying to be strong. And Mm -hmm. I think that's the beauty of our humanity and like loving all those like beautiful parts of ourselves that feel messy. So you, many times we said, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm such a mess. It's like, maybe this is the time to really acknowledge that messy is equals human like messiness is that the seed cracking open things look messy when they're reorganizing to a greater level of awareness so if we're trying to avoid a mess then we never really get to the center it's like the lollipop you know so we can come out fighting so just noticing those parts that feel defensive we can always you know you can feel a trigger a charge a heat I, and can you not avoid that feeling, but can you acknowledge and, and maybe tag what it is that you're feeling before the words jump out of your mouth? So yes, I think yes. there's a big distinction of, of when we're like, well, I should just be nice or I should just ignore. That's a bad feeling to have. What I'm suggesting is don't ignore that feeling that is within that trigger because there is part of you locked in prison there that wants to come out. Do you come out fighting and 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 using harsh words on somebody else and projecting? That's what we want to try to do differently. That's right. Is it going to happen sometimes? Yes. And like, yeah. can you go back and just say, hey, like, that was just me and a trigger that I felt hurt and I'm really sorry, but can that be an entryway? Even when you feel like you do say something Mm -hmm. harmful, can you go back and revisit it with that person and mend? Because we're always going to rupture. I mean, communication has two big parts. Like we rupture at moments and we repair. And I think Mm -hmm. that a lot of times we rupture, but we forget to repair. That's right. 
And I was even thinking too, as you were saying all this, the person we talk to the most is ourselves. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't Absolutely. know where I heard that first, but that is so true. And so that is, again, that life skill of not only doing it with someone else, but don't forget about the self too. You are having this dialogue and this conversation. You're saying these things to yourself, whether you're yeah. pre-gaming it, post-gaming it, keep swallowing it, whatever it is. That's the other thing I wanted to with, say. Yeah. The swallowing it, it feels important to acknowledge the freeze. <clears throat> so some of you may be going, I don't use softening language and I don't even, I don't fight. I just go blank. I freeze. And I think I mentioned on here at one of our, one of our episodes where sometimes in relationship in proximity to let's say a man that i feel has a lot of power in some way not necessarily power over me but just that i might go blank probably more so men but just when i feel like i'm not intelligent enough that i can't articulate enough and i'm putting that pressure on myself either unconsciously then i will freeze and i think it's a real neurological reaction when we go blank, I think especially for women in which we've been engendered, and there's this great book that I think both women and men could read called Unbound by Cassia Urberniak. And it's really about power dynamics. And I love how she talks about how we can, our submissive way of feeling in communication that we go inward first and then how we also bring our energy out. It is really worth the read and something else that we just brought up <clears throat> made me think of a great book called us mm. by terrence real i, I was think. about I, yes great relational book so i love that he yes. he just it's so good because he talks about like what we were saying is that that like yes rupture happens and and sometimes when we're both rupturing in a moment in a connection with somebody, mm -hmm. it's really hard. So mm -hmm. he really teaches some really cool skills of going, okay, this person's rupturing. Can you in a moment let that person rupture? Mm -hmm. And the other part would be the repair that's so important. And yes. can you have places where you get messy, which could be a form of rupturing. And rupturing when I, you know, to define that is just we're we're not in the place of thinking. We're just in the the emotional aspect. And I think that in the consciousness world, we're trying to always be mindful of that. But I think we need space to rupture, to be the yeah. seat that's like, oh cracking open into something can you bear with me mm. and so that goes all back to the communication skills and these are two incredible books that if you are really wanting to deepen to become aware of what you're saying and how that impacts your relationships and even that relationship with yourself these are two great resources i agree I love yeah that. so something that uh, that brings up too is that as you were sharing that it's a good practice to recognize that when we're in this communication and what we're saying has so much more to do with us. And I know we've been saying that all along. And there's a part of me that's like, you know how sneaky you can be and go, yeah, 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 I get it. I know, I know, I know. And then that vulnerable emotional piece that's when you are in communication and when you're saying what you're saying. That's all you, baby. Like you are having this visceral response to something, this whole, like just all the things, this chemical reaction is happening within your body. So much of communication, I think, especially for myself can be, well, that person did this, this, and that. And so I'm doing this, this, and that, or that person didn't say it right. So I had to do this, this, and that. And there's so there to me, the ultimate red flag, the flashing light, whatever we want to <laughs> Danger, aha. danger, danger, Will Robinson. The aha in this is <clears throat> crystal. Don't bypass. There's a vulnerable piece in there that says what you're saying has everything to do with you. Thank you. It's like, if you are stretching your communication, what I'm hearing is that if it's not fe feeling somewhat vulnerable, then you're probably not there yet. Yeah. The other thing that I really want to say is that when you say it's all you, I think that to remember that we are relational creatures is super important. <clears throat> what I mean by that 
is that you could walk in one environment in a dynamic of a relationship and you are saying and becoming and able to say very different things than walking into a different dynamic of a relationship where triggers come up and things like that. And even though that is part of who we are in that moment mm -hmm. and that ownership is important, that we, I think it's important to remember that the dynamic is what's evoking that and what kind of dynamics do we want to put ourselves in Mm -hmm. Like there, that, that if we're growing, I think in any relationship, there are going to be trigger ask feelings that can come up at some point. So that goes back to you will rupture, you will repair. So I think that is an important thing to acknowledge. I also think that for those of us that feel stuck sometimes, it, it can be almost like it's all me, it's all me, it's all me. And it's like, well, you're in relating. It's never all you. Mm -hmm. But can both parties acknowledge that vulnerable piece that allow the dynamic of the relationship to grow. Yes, that is very true. Thank you yeah. for letting me share that. And with this, I think it's funny, my voice is changing. <clears throat> it has a little bit of a, I don't know, it has a little growl in it right now. So something's happening. I don't know about you all. So as per usual, we're, we're grateful. Thank you so much. And until next time. Bye. And now, Trevor Hall with Blue Sky Mind. It's in it through the body.